me horror. Everybody knows it. I don't have to say what I am, because I've done it. That's the difference between you and me. You talk about it, I do it. You will know that your ass is mine, and that's the bottom line. Just don't go sit down. Thank you so much, Stanley Mack, as it is a big day today. It's the Eastside Dave at Sun Wrestling Show. I'm Eastside Dave. That's Sun over there. Stanley Mack. Another round of applause. That's my name. That's your name. And what we're doing today is a big, big episode because we've got WWE Extreme Rules, huge pay-per-view tonight. But we also are going to be talking about AEW. Is that Uh, Wrestling League enters our show's domain. We're going to talk about uh, some of the things that we loved about uh, AEW Grand Slam uh, this past week. Two huge nights, Dynamite and Rampage on Wednesday and Friday, respectively, in Queens, in New York City, Arthur Ashe Stadium. It was phenomenal, but we got to get to Extreme Rules because that is tonight, Stanley Mack. Huh? You excited? I'm so excited for Extreme Rules. Are you ready to bring it for this podcast episode? I'm going to bring it. How much are you going to bring it? 100%. How about 150? 200. 375? 376. 376% it is. Well, Woohoo! Okay, so listen. We have Extreme Rules tonight. And we have some big, big things going on, baby. Let's get right into it. We're not going to waste any time. Let's get right into it right now. Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Becky Lynch is your Women's SmackDown Champion. (coughs) Excuse me. I'm so excited. (coughs) I'm coughing. Uh, That wasn't a setup for anything. That's just uh, Becky Lynch. Um, um, Becky... She won it out on uh, SummerSlam, controversial style. She changed uh, heel at SummerSlam. Don't know why they had a squash match at SummerSlam. I think they could have simply had a babyface versus babyface match. And then afterwards, after either Bianca wins or Becky wins, Becky attacks Bianca with a chair and boom, there you go. Now you've got your heel, but you also give the fans uh, their money's worth. When you give a 30-second squash match, and, and who's that help? Doesn't help Becky. Doesn't make her any more of a heel. And it doesn't help Bianca Belair. It just makes people kind of go, ugh, this stunk like poop. It stunk like poop that Stanley did and put in a Tupperware jar and then gave it to his grandmother and said it was chocolate ice cream. Which I know you were planning on doing. But I've told you this once. I've told you many, many times. We don't freeze poop in this house. We never freeze poop. So you can't freeze it and say it's chocolate ice cream to your grandmother because we're anti-poop freeze here, okay? Do you understand? Yep. Who do you like, Stanley? Becky Lynch or Bianca Belair? That squash thing was very not smart, but I do think Becky Lynch is definitely going to win this match. Stanley likes uh, Becky Lynch. Uh, you, you You didn't like the squash match either? Definitely not. Didn't make any sense. Becky was a late uh, game substitute there. I guess uh, Sasha Banks, COVID uh, positive test or something. So she was pulled. You don't have someone. If you, if you replace her with Becky, all right, great. But you don't have Becky beat her in 30 seconds. Come on, WWE. What, is, what sense does that make? Damian Priest versus Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus. It's a triple threat match for the WWE United States Championship with Damian Priest, your U.S. champion. Stanley, who do you like, buddy? The, you know who I like? I like def- I think I really, well, I like Jeff Hardy in the match. I want him to win, but I think Damian Priest is going to win. Uh, Stanley likes uh, Damian Priest, thinks Damian Priest is going to win. Jeff Hardy, um... He's been uh, he's been 
a source of some fan anger lately. Not not because the fans are mad at Jeff Hardy. They're mad at the WWE. Jeff Hardy was one of those, you know, nine, um, well, how else do you say it? Losers who uh, chases the 24-7 champion around. The 24-7 championship is very, is basically another early 2000s hardcore belt where you have to defend it 24-7 anywhere in and out of the building. And it's bad enough to be the champion of that. It's even worse when you're one of the 10 guys chasing that champion, and that's where Jeff Hardy was spotted recently. Unless you named R-Truth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, R-Truth is the champion. But, but you know what I'm saying. Jeff Hardy has no business. A legend like that should not be chasing some dopey 24-7 championship. It's a stupid. It's, it's bad. It's bad. God, the WWE. I don't know what's happening right now. But I do agree with you. I think Damian Priest is going to win. Next match, Charlotte Flair versus Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's Championship. Recently, Alexa Bliss um, has been hanging out with a creepy, spooky doll named Lily. And now, Alexa Bliss has given Charlotte her own creepy, spooky doll named Charlie. So we've got Alexa Bliss and Charlotte with dolls. In my opinion, maybe they should make it a tag team match where Charlotte has to tag team with Charlie. Alexa Bliss has to tag team with Lily. And then we can do that. Or better yet, since you've ruined both Charlotte and Alexa Bliss's careers, personas, characters, why don't you just get rid of Alexa Bliss and Charlotte all together and make Lily and Charlie wrestle with some CGI technology graphics. Yeah. WWE wants to be a movie studio, right? They want to do movies? Well, that's good. Let's just eliminate Charlotte and Alexa and just have the dolls wrestle. You can, you, you can do it. Pixar knows how to do it. Go call Disney. Say, how do we do the CGI technology where we can just have the dolls wrestle in the ring? And so Charlotte and Alexa Bliss does, don't even have to be, you know, apart. A of this uh, Titanic-like disaster on a wrestling program. Better yet, me and Stanley would love to be in a WWE ring. I'll take uh, Charlie the doll. Stanley can take Alexa, uh, 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 Lily the doll. And me and Stanley can have a dolls match where we just hit each other with dolls. That could work too. Stanley opinion of this match, but also opinion of what they've done to Alexa Bliss. And Charlotte now has to be a part of the doll segment is what I'm calling it. Stan, what do you think? Yeah, I think I think I I'm going with uh I think I'm gonna go with so, a solid foil, but this has been like a complete disaster. You haven't liked it. You're you're the demographic. You're the uh, twelve year old demographic. You're you're a kid. You're a child. This is what uh, you're supposed to like. Don't you understand? So I don't understand. Explain, explain a little bit better, because you're a kid. This is this is this is aimed at you. Because um, no adult is going to think this is even remotely funny. You took Bray Wyatt's genius and brilliance. You you tried to repackage it for Alexa Bliss, and it hasn't worked at all. Me, like, I'm, I'm, it's like it, this is even like this is for like three years old. <laughs> That's, that's the demographic for this. The, the, oh, okay. So so because you're not three, you don't like it? Yeah, that's okay, the demographic. Say. That's the demographic is three-year-olds. That's sad. A 12-year-old, you think this is lame? Yeah. What word would you describe? Do you, would you use? Bad. <laughs> bad. Okay. Stan thinks it's bad. But keep uh, putting your head in the sand, WWE, and keep lying to yourselves. WWE wants to sell their... Um, League reportedly, their their company uh, reportedly between eighteen and twenty four months because that's when the Peacock uh, network runs out. Their contract with the Peacock network, which was an, another embarrassment, as the Peacock has been horrible, and I mean the, the the quality is just nothing like the WWE network. I've got news for the WWE: if you keep this up. 18 to 24 months from now, you will not have a WWE to sell or 
if Vince McMahon thinks that he's like George Lucas and that he can sell the Star Wars franchise for $4 billion to Disney, that's what the WWE reportedly wants to do. They've taken a page out of George Lucas and say, we're going to sell this for $4 billion, right? 18 to 24 months from now. It's not going to be worth $4 billion. It's not going to be worth four fruit roll-ups. The quality of the WWE is deteriorating at such a rapid level that it seriously could be out of business. And now you're seeing people like Sam Roberts and all the WWE lifers run for cover and scurry like the cockroaches that they are trying to get into AEW or GCW or wherever it'll take them. Well, it's the cockroaches like you guys who should have been telling Vince McMahon, you've lost your mind. Get the show back. Stop overwriting it. Stop overproducing it. Stop expecting these people to be Robert De Niro and, 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 and Meryl Streep and, and being some great actors. And let them be wrestlers. For crying out loud. There will not be a WWE. And people might think that uh, this is a, me not like it. How, how many WWE stars do I love? <laughs> I love Stone Cold Steve Austin. I love Roddy Piper. I love Mick Foley. I love Randy Savage. I love on and on. I love a zillion WWE stars. That's why I never root against the WWE. What I'm saying is all of the yes men and all of the people who 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 never are honest with with Vince McMahon, Triple H or those who run the WWE and they're simply not honest and say, "Hey, right now our product stinks." You people have done a great disservice to the WWE because 18, 24 months from now, it could be out of business or it'll be a fraction of the greatness that it used to be. That's the reality. And that reality to me is now begin becoming likely. Likely. They'll be able to sell it for $4, not $4 billion. That's right. Thank you, Stan. The next match... Liv Morgan versus Carmella in a singles match. With all due respect, who cares? Liv Morgan wins. I'd rather eat a bowl of Stanley's chocolate ice cream, which is just duty that he released into Tupperware and put in the freezer and froze it and told everyone that it's ice cream. And I'd rather eat that than watch this match. Let's go with Liv Morgan because she's from New Jersey and I'm a proud New Jerseyan. Next one. The Usos versus the Street Profits for a SmackDown Tag Team Championship. Go ahead, Stan. I got the... You know, different. I think the Usos win. Can I have a reason why the Usos win? Now you're giving me just as much nonsense as Vince McMahon. You see how he doesn't have any logic, any reasons? You've just pulled a Vince on this program. That's right. That's... I'm talking some smack, and I'm an inch away from your head. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. What's the reason? Because, because I think the users are going to do some, like, they're going to, they're going to, like, Maybe like use the ropes or do something like that. No. Usos will cheat. They'll be underhanded. They'll 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 uh, find a way. Okay, I'm with you. Uh, let's go with the Street Profits. I, I'm j- just to disagree with you. I'm gonna say that the Street Profits win the Smack t- SmackDown Tag Team Championships tonight. I don't really have an answer. I just you know belt change, title change. Maybe that'll that'll work there. And then finally, last one. Wow. Uh, it's a short card, small card. It's six matches. Final one is Roman Reigns takes on the Demon Finn Balor for the WWE Universal Championship. Roman's your champ. Stanley, who do you like? Okay, now I have something to say about this one. Okay, you've got something that to say. Is, okay, so I, what I think is going to happen is the Demon Finn Balor will be this close. He, he's going to, he hits one with a strength point. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. And in comes Brock to save Roman Reigns. Oh, oh, oh! And Roman Reigns retains the title. 
And then what? Brock and Roman are allies? Or after that, Brock beats up Roman because he wants to be the one to take the, the championship and not Finn Balor? <laughs> no, but which one? Come on, come on. I think he'll... Finish your thing. Is he on now Roman's side? Or was that just because he doesn't want anyone else to beat Roman he but him? He doesn't want anyone else. To be, he doesn't want anyone else to beat Roman. But him. Uh, I like it. That's a very good prediction. And I think you're right. I think Roman Reigns is going to win this match. Brock Lesnar coming out. Could I see it? Yeah, I could. And then the announcer is going to be like, well, why did he do that? <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. All right. I like it. I like Brock Lesnar. Let's go for it. Listen, you know, all the criticism that we levy uh, uh, at the WWE, it's not because we are WWE haters. We've said it many, many times. There are people who are working very well right now. Brock Lesnar being one of them. Uh, Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman, though, on an everyday basis, week in and week out, they're fantastic. No Seth Rollins on this card. No Edge on this card. Um, there are times where I look at the WWE and say, you know, do they have enough star power? It, it, that thought was unfathomable, but right now it is. No Randy uh, Orton on this card. I'm not sure what, you know, where all those guys are, but uh, they're not there, and they're your best. So it's confusing. Um, it's not the greatest card in the world. Maybe they just figured, hey, you know what? It's extreme rules. We're coming off of uh, SummerSlam. We don't need it to be the best card. I don't know. Stanley, before we go on to AEW Grand Slam, which we will talk about and discuss uh, what we're liking about AEW, how's school been? School's been... It's been good. Because what... It's been good. I am glad that everyone was able to witness that answer. Because any time that I asked Stan, how is school? Here's what I get. Ready? Here's my impression. It's good. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, how's math been? Good. What class? How's history? It's been good. What classes are you taking? You told me you were taking um, math and what was that other one? ERA. That's what uh, Ron Guidry led the American League in the ERA in 1978. So as if your school is teaching about the Louisiana Lightning, Ron Guidry, New York Yankee, great, 1978. Look up that ERA. He was dominant that year. Look at that ERA if that's what your school is teaching. That was a heck of an ERA. And I'm, and I'm thankful that your school is prioritizing correctly and teaching about great Yankee legends. Uh, Ron Guidry, unbelievable. What number? 49. You would have never gotten that. Did your school teach you that? That Guidry's 49? Are they, wait, wait, what are the Yankees uh, are they, uh, teaching about? Whitey Ford? No. CeCe Sabathia? Andy Pettit? I'm just, at, now yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to think of Yankee lefties specifically. Southpaws. Those are all Southpaws right there. Dave Rigetti? Yes. Good school. It's a heck of a school. This is this is why this is why I sent you. This is this is why we I spend nineteen thousand dollars in tuition for this school every single year. It's unbelievable. All right, that's good. Are there any uh, cool kids there? How, how's how's the food? Uh, the the food's good. <laughs> the food's good. Yeah. Why are you lying right now? Um. All right, let's go on into AEW Grand Slam. It was a two-day event. Dynamite on Wednesday, Rampage on Friday. Both shows were two hours long. It took place Arthur Ashe Stadium in Queens, New York. Uh, pretty darn awesome, if you ask me. Stanley, uh, Dynamite on Wednesday kicked off, I mean, right out of the gate. Kenny Omega, the AEW World Champion, taking on... Uh, Brian Danielson, how about that for a, for a, for the first match of this uh, epic night here, two night event? What do you, what do you think about that? Great match. I thought the ending with the whole time coming out was a little weird. You didn't like uh, that that there was no winner. The the time ran out. See, here's the thing. I don't mind a time running out scenario. It it makes me less angry than say the double count out. Or the disqualification. I always hated the double disqualification. They used to do that back in the day. And I never understood what was happening with double disqualification. How could two guys get disqualified? It makes no I... sense. Um, I don't mind time running out because it happens in sports. You know, you see ties. 
in a baseball game. I mean, baseball. Well, actually, that's the one sport you'd ever see a tie in. But uh, I meant to say football. We're in football season. And, and even if the game goes to overtime, if, if, if no one can win, it goes to a tie. Time runs out. Happens in hockey during the regular season. I'm okay with it. I thought the match was great. What would you give it? On, uh, like, uh, what kind of review about the match itself? What, what would you think? Brian Danielson, Kenny Omega. What does what Stanley give it? Four stars. Four stars? Um, as Stanley Mac has just invented a star review system. Unbe- and a four stars out of how many stars? Five. Out of five. So Stanley Mac has just invented a new five star wrestling match review system. We have officially trademarked it. I don't want to hear anything about Meltzer. I don't want to even hear anything that rhymes with Meltzer. Including Seltzer. I don't like Meltzer. I don't like Seltzer. Next match. Um, well, we're not going to do all the matches. We're just going to... I loved the Kenny omega Brian Danielson match. Okay, I thought it was great. The other match... Uh, uh, another uh, match that I enjoyed. Malachi Black defeating Cody Rhodes. Malachi Black, to me, is one of those people... How did the WWE let him go? He has an entrance that is Undertaker-esque. He likes the drama, the psychology. He likes all things professional wrestling and even, dare I say, sports entertainment. He can talk on the mic. He has a personality and he's big. He's like 6'5 or so and he's put on, you know, some muscle. How, what? What, what, do, what are you thinking about Malachi Black? I like him. Yeah? Yeah. I like him. Okay. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. How about, how about speaking up a little bit? Oh my God, I can barely hear you. People are turning up their uh, the, the volume on their cars, and then and then when I get on the microphone, I blast their earbuds into oblivion. We have to match you, our, our our levels a little bit. Yeah, I mean I don't know how that would be. Way there we go. That was good. Do that again. I don't know how that would be. Let him go. Even louder. One more. I I don't know how WWE let him go. Give yourself five stars now. You're not the only one who can give five stars. I just gave you five stars in your face. Um, MJF defeated Brian Pillman Jr. I like those two. Uh, I like. Uh, do you think Brian Pillman Jr. is going to be a superstar like his dad? Or yeah, yes. <laughs> is that it? Kenny uh, uh, MJF was great. Uh, Sting and Darby Allen defeated FT- FTR. I, I actually really enjoyed that match a lot. FTR, they're fantastic, aren't they? Um, and Sting and Darby Allen are, are working with me. They've worked with, uh, for me since day one. Dr. Britt Baker defeated Ruby Soho um, for the AEW World's Champion, uh, Women's World Championship. She retains. What do you think about Dr. Britt Baker? I, I, Dr. Britt Baker's been carrying the AEW Women's Division. Carrying the Women's Division, says Stanley Mack, the inventor of the five-star review system. I... Uh, I think Dr. Britt Baker has been the best uh, probably in all of uh, the leagues, all of the wrestling. Best promos, best matches, biggest moments. They all belong to her. So uh, I, thought, I thought Dynamite hugely successful. The next one was Rampage. And I liked how they set up Rampage. with uh, They kicked it right off with CM Punk going against Powerhouse Hobbs, part of Team Taz, hook on the outside. What did you think about that? Punk's been like... Like, that's been the biggest probably return in the past five years. Honestly. No question. I think in the past seven years, since literally he left, I think the return of Punk. I, I, listen, it's crazy to think about this, but there, there, he's, his return is even bigger than Edge's, I would it, say. It is. And, and Edge was out for longer, you know? Now, Daniel Bryan's return was, was awesome because I, I think a lot of us, myself included, never thought... He was going to leave the WWE, and, and because they're protective of him, I guess we, they, we, I thought he was never really going to be in the ring again, and that was great. But the punk thing, it, it's bigger than everyone's. Because of the lawsuits, because of the, you know, they've been fighting in and out of court, um, so much bad blood, so much personal anger in this, his, his comeback has been great, and honestly, I think everything he's done has been fantastic. All of his promos, now this is his second match, I've loved them both. Uh, Punk was on commentary um, a couple dynamites ago. I think he's just uh, dominating. 
in, on in, on every single level, and he's made uh, AEW uh, a major major league and and the league right now, the league. And I'm not going to talk smack about WWE because I've loved so many guys over the over the years, but SmackDown's doing good, and Raw's not. Raw's a bad show. Not 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 just, Raw is bad. SmackDown I can watch for some reason. Raw is terrible. Um, all right, Super Click, Adam Cole, Young Bucks. They got together. They took on uh, Christian Cage and Jurassic Express. Are you into them at all? Super Click? I like Super Click. Yeah? What about? Um, Adam Cole? You like the Young Bucks? What, yeah, who, no, who do you like? I, yeah. No, I think Adam Cole's return to... I mean, him, I mean, him coming to AEW was... I mean, a small move from him. It was a good move by Adam Cole. I mean, and, and it, it, it made total sense. He's literally dating Britt Baker. He's best friends with the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. We all knew he was going to go there. Um, and, then, and then you had, you know, Lucha Brothers were involved, and, and that was great. And then Moxley and Eddie Kingston uh, defeated Minoru Suzuki and Lance Archer, which I actually very much appreciated that match. And I thought there was great buzz and great electricity in it because Eddie Kingston, being from New York City, and uh, Queens, of course, in New York, uh, Arthur Ashe Stadium. You know, I love the Arthur Ashe Stadium thing. And I'm very surprised that the WWE had never thought of that. I've been to Ar- Arthur Ashe Stadium before. It's, it's gorgeous. It's very comfortable. It's got great vision. Everywhere you go, there's not a bad seat in the house. For a 20,000-person, basically, outdoor stadium, it, it feels small and intimate. And uh, basically, it feels like an arena with no roof on it. And I think it's a great spot. And now AEW essentially has sort of claimed that venue for themselves. It was a brilliant move. I thought, I, th- I thought it really worked. I thought Dynamite and Rampage were excellent this week. I thought they were both way better than Raw and uh, SmackDown. I'm hopeful for tonight's WWE Extreme Rules. I'm hopeful that uh, Roman Reigns and Finn Balor, the Demon, put on a, an excellent show. But the WWE, they have a lot of work to do. Let's be honest. Stop treating the audience like little, little, tiny kids. Stanley just said it, right? You said it? Yeah. The, the dolls, all the dolls, you're not into that? Yeah, I'm not into it. What's working for you right now in the WWE? Because I, I don't always want to bad mouth it. Because again, I said I love Stone Cold Steve I, Austin, love Roman Piper. Like, I like, well, I'm not bad mouthing it either. Roman Reigns, I love him. I love Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman. Is that it? Anybody else? What about Rollins? Seth Rollins. Okay. Eds. All right. So there are a few, but if you're noticing, they're all on SmackDown. That's the problem. Raw stinks. SmackDown's good. But even SmackDown, while being good, lately has not been as good as Dynamite. I'm just being honest. I am rooting for all wrestling leagues to be successful and fantastic. Because guess what? I watch them all. So I want to be entertained and be like, this is great. This is great. Oh, this was great. But, you know, they got to pick up the pace. Stanley, give us some final thoughts. AEW versus WWE. Where are we right now? Who do you think is doing the better job? Uh, come on, break it down a little bit before we get out of here. Um, I think I think AEW is winning the war, in my opinion, right now. Go right into the I mic. I think AEW is winning the war right now. Okay, and give us a reason why. Because, I mean, just just like what? WWE's having dolls and stuff, while AEW is having the return of CM Punk. That's just, well, <laughs> when you do it, when you look at it like that, WWE is literally playing with dolls, and AEW just brought in CM Punk and Brian Danielson. And in about two months, we very well could be looking at Bray Wyatt or Wyndham Rotunda or whatever name he's going to choose. And while we get the real deal in AEW, they're going to have Alexa Bliss playing with his dolls and using his uh, playground and his fun house. Ruining, by the way, Alexa Bliss, who was a wonderful heel. This isn't anti-Alexa. This is anti-WW creative. You've dropped the ball. All of the yes men and all of the writers and all of the creative heads who have done nothing 
but say yes and kiss butt have put the WWE in a position where 18 to 24 months from now when they want to sell, they might be out of business and or their company will be worth about 25 to bucks. Good luck. Anyway, I'm going to watch Extreme Rule the uh, Rules nonetheless. And I continue to watch AEW and we'll figure out where the future of the East Side David's on wrestling show. I know one thing, our show ain't going nowhere. Guess who's the uh, best father son wrestling podcast in the world? Guess who? Us. My name is East Side Dave, and that's my son Stanley. And we'll see you later. Stanley, say goodbye. Goodbye. Woo!